Hi guys, this is Nam Grab and welcome to continuation of KCM 2024 Season 5 Week 3. This is set number 3, Mong vs. Action. We finally have some normal players playing, not some noobs, not some scrubs. Uh, Mong, um, he was uh, we were able to defeat uh, Tyson in a very hilarious game. There was not much skill involved there. Uh, Tyson just kind of gifted Mong a free win after losing two zealots. He proceeded to expand very quickly and then go for Robo and City of Doom. Like the, the the weakest build you can possibly have, right? I mean, the normal build would be to go to be going for Shadow, excuse me, uh, robotics, and then three gateway and going for Ops. But he opted to go for the Wild and Wacky because maybe he was thinking if I just go up standard, I would lose the game. Anyways, uh, this fourth, this third set is going to be played on the map um, uh, Radiant, and let's just quickly. Show show you the map stats so for Zerg players on Radiant they enjoy a 49.9% win rate so flat balance uh, on this map for Zerg versus uh, Terran which is nice by the way before the game gets lit up let me, me read some advertising because I have not read for a while my name is Namcraft with a K welcome to the channel thanks for coming here and please take a look at the video description for some information that may be of use to you I'm known to cast in an insanely quick pace and I upload videos almost live uh, right after the game is finished on the live stream you would see my vaults on YouTube so that is my specialty uh, uh, and on these almost live games, uh, such as KCM, ASL, PSL, I will never have ads between, uh, you know, inside a, uh, inside a set, inside an actual game from the zeroth minute to the moment the GG is typed. Uh, so you will never see ads there. You will see the ad before the set begins and between sets. Uh, because uh, you know, sometimes I may have two videos in this, uh, two sets in the same video, but very rarely, very rarely. So, anyways, these almost live tournaments, please enjoy uninterrupted StarCraft content for me. But if the tournament or if the game is not almost live, for example, DPL or LadderNet series, uh, then you will see a lot of ads around. You can try to get away from those ads by becoming one of my supporters. There are four ways for you to do that. They're all mentioned in the video description. Uh, these guys whose name you're seeing at the top side of the screen have bought me coffee in the last 30 days. They are my supporters and you're welcome to actually chip in as well. One dollar works, two dollar works, whatever amount. You don't need to donate a lot. Whatever is fine, just to show the gesture. Thanks a lot for supporting. If you have Facebook, feel free to add friends me with my uh, Facebook accounts, use your real Facebook account, please. No clone, no fake, no AI accounts. All of that is going to be mentioned in the video description. If you have Telegram, go ahead and join the Brute Warfare Telegram channel where I upload VODs instantly, almost the same speed as YouTube. And you can enjoy VODs without ads on Telegram. What else? You can join the Brute Warfare Facebook group. Um, and all of that, once again, is going to be mentioned in the video description. There's going to be a slight disorientation in the audio channels with a little bit more English on one ear, a little bit more Korean on the other ear. Yeah, that is by design if you don't like that uh, I guess you know go somewhere else or just get some headphones or just get some speakers whatever is the option you're not using it try the other option it may work a little bit better um, and I guess that's it if one final note if you're gonna say a comment as to who wins the game please go ahead and type spoiler and then enter four times and then just say oh my god Mong is such a beast or something like that that will keep things civilized between various people so thanks a lot let's dive into this game right now Mong versus action we're at almost the fourth minute and 38th second of the game and we're gonna be seeing uh, two hatchery with spire and in base third hatchery completely scouted by Mong so no Mong knows exactly what action is up to his finishes engine we upgrading plus one weapons right now academy almost completed so these timings are very standard for both of these players the zergling accounts for action is quite low and he's done a good job to try to stop these marines from moving out with a very low number of zerglings he could actually you know die right now if those marines actually push it a bit harder but looks like he's not going to do that uh what i mean is that uh mong is not going to push and even though the zerglings don't have speed it uh i guess maybe they now have speed uh the marines feel like it's going to be better to stay home they got to snipe a single zergling down which is going to be very nice but it would not be enough to actually deter, uh, you know, action. Uh, you know, it would not force action to make any sunken at the front door. Um, anyways, yeah, it's going to be the small calm moment before the storms down. The mutes are going to start to gather. Usually around this time, the, the turns could actually try to push a little bit. But this map, Radeon, is very large. So I could totally understand if... Um, Mong prefers to actually sit at home for some time. Spy completes, and we are seeing indeed uh, five mutilists. I 
think. Uh, scan is coming up now, and I think uh, Mong will know exactly where to scan. He knows that the spire is in the main. He doesn't need to scan that. He will possibly just scan the expansion to see how many sunken there are, and he will try to find the third base. You can actually get a, a zoom in on where exactly the third base might be. It would be great, but it looks like right now Action is not targeting that. He's not trying to expand. He's gonna be just putting up a lot of mutilists. Looks like the first five mutilists start to move across the map now, and of course Action is, uh, you know, gonna be looking for some weak spots. Mong is prepared, I think. Some uh, some turrets at the mineral line, some turrets at the truck. Okay, we have an ocean chamber. What is the meaning of that? I don't know because I'm not a Zerg player. Also, I'm not a very high level Starcraft player, but I believe he might be going for some quick ground upgrades, right? Building that ocean chamber very early. Uh, but he now has seven mutilists. He start to come in and he will attack the SV. The first SV building the turret is gonna get sniped. More attack on the SV, but now we will have a four turret formation. No, we don't. Very good for action to kill a lot of SVs before the turrets could actually complete their their, 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 their construction here. SVs are running away, but finally one medic is here to arrive. And that turret is not even completed. Very, very strange behavior uh, from uh, from Mong to not complete the turret with his SVs. And now he's losing way too many, way too many SVs. And now he would try to complete it. He cannot, he cannot complete it. He, he would try again. He would try again. The turret completes at the right moment. But will it get repaired? One turret falls very, very quickly. But the Marines have started to make their way across the map. And that was a lot of SVs and time wasted. I think uh, for Mong, so I think he's surely gonna be in a disadvantage situation now compared to his opponent. Ashton has been doing really well, but we have plus one weapons on the Marine, so that's something to work uh, with right now. Uh, Ashton might be planning a backstab. He's got some Zerlings waiting in the area. He's got his Mutrus running around, looking to find exactly where those Marines are located. The second group of Marines are ready. The Zerlings are gonna try to disappear, but no, it looks like. Um, Mong is going to be able to save both of his groups and group them together in, into an even bigger group. The, f the third base comes up now at the top left. As you can see, Mong has not scouted that. He has scanned the expansion. He saw a sunken. So that's fine. Anyways, another tourist goes up now. That's 11 mutuals. That's a lot of mutuals, man. Looks like they're going to be wasting their, their time just trying to attack the marines. But I would say go for the turrets. Go for the turrets at the mineral line. It will be a lot better. To try to chip those turrets away. Uh, but he's going to try to, you know, just, you know, chip the marines away. Instead, he loses a uh, mutuals in the process. Do we have lurkers? It looks like we don't have. We have rush into hive. We don't have any hydrolysis and lurkers at all, man. So what is up with this build? Looks like he's gonna try to survive purely on mutilus and zerglings. Uh, he's making a lot of zealot. Excuse me, zerglings though. In the in the process, we have double star power coming up though. So looks like some sensors is gonna get created. But for the time being, I think some some shenanigan is being pulled by action. He's making a lot of zerglings in the process here. He's gonna try to initiate a base trade or something. He's hoping that his enemy would move out of position and then he will move in with the rest of his zerglings and mutus. He's dividing his forces into two different groups and waiting patiently. Of course, all of this is a lot of drones lost, right? Because you are using your lava to make zerglings and mutus instead of drones. He's gonna try to surround a first group of marines. He gets them or what? Looks like he's able to get a little bit of the marines but he will need to back up now because the marines gonna start to chase their his tails. Um... And indeed, we do say, okay, this is gonna be a rush to Ultras with that Defiler. This is an interesting build. By skipping Hydras and Lurkers, it goes directly to Ultras. I don't know if this would work. Uh, and the response that Mong is going for is, I think, rather interesting. Does he have triple starboard? Is that just double starboard? I think it's double starboard. But he need to just, he need to go for just sciences. So don't even go for Valkyries. Don't. Oh my god. Zerling backstab here. They will find an opening. Marine's gonna have to get back. Zerling's gonna try to attack. At the last minute, looks like good uh, action from Mong. Excuse me, no pun intended. Uh, and looks like action has lost the bulk of his mutants now. He just has about nine mutants remaining. Uh, and he gets chased around. But all of this is just buying time. Time. He want to buy time until his ultras are ready as he need to protect his third base as well because keep in mind that base is like alone in the dark man. Remember the video game alone in the dark. Who has played the game the alone in the dark? Let me know in the comment section. Anyways, upgrades are going on with the ultra carbon now for sure I think. Uh, the third base has got some drones on gas and some more drones and he's gonna send those drones towards the third base. Now we have some scan and this scan was not able to see anything but he will see the Nidus canal. I don't know if he was actually paying attention to that or not, but now in any event, I think he does. He does notice the Nidus canal, and still he knows that there's going to be another base somewhere on this map. 
Um, all right, mutualists are still running around looking for some openings. We are waiting for the appearance of the first pair of science vessels because those will solve the mutualist problem. Plus one weapon from plus one armor on a medic. Looks like Mon's gonna try to move towards the top left. He's gonna be careful, man, because I think some ultras are being made right now. So if action time the ultra is right with his the rest of his zonings and mutuals he might be able to crush this first group of medic marines because that's not very numerous in my opinion that's like one and a half control group and three ultras and some zonings and mutuals will surely be able to take out those forces unless mong is able to group up the first bio with the second bio which has double double science vessels those are the you know the the the, the, the money units here they are going to be waiting to cast uh, an irradiator on what i don't know on the mutuals on the ultras he's looking for those uh mutuals right now and the Science vessels were, were discovered by the Zerlings, but it's going to be very hard, very hard for Ashen to snipe. He might try to go inside. Yeah, this is a right move here. He goes in here and try to sack his mutualists as much as possible uh, because he doesn't want to get them wasted by the science vessels anyway. So it might be better to use them this way. But look at the attack on the third base of action. He's got to cover that with something. Okay, looks like there's got to be a nice irradiant, but it started to hurt the SCV as well. Five ultras on high ground. We have a simple, a, a single sunken that is completed. The Oh, just need to buy time until the sunken, the sunken completes here. Only two meters steep the area. The sunkens are able to combine with the ultras to push the marines back. Very nice attack. Okay, we do have scourges coming in to snipe the the science vessel. One science vessel down. These uh, marines gonna get stuck on the low ground. Um, so at least action is surviving for the timing. Uh, action is behind about 20 supply. He's made a lot of sunken. This build is interesting. Sk skipping definers, going for just mass ultralist. Uh, but this build is susceptible to irradiate I think so he needs to actually pay more attention to to start to make some scourges and try to you know consciously find those uh, science vessels and, and take them out because you know uh, in a game like this we could easily see the Terran player goes for something like seven or eight science vessels which would be a nightmare to work with if you're a Zerg player uh, more sunkens coming out and I would say that action is building way too many sunkens He's got Nidus Canals protected behind the sunken line. Why does he need to build that many sunken? Just use the ultralist to move back and forth between bases. I think it's better. Okay, what exactly is happening? Why is this drone moving towards the bottom left? He's gonna try to stake a sneaky base somewhere. He is gonna expand, I think, towards the 8 o'clock position. That base is very interesting because we have a red dot on the high ground, but that dot is not gonna be able to see the low ground. Maybe this is a conscientious choice, I think, by action to hide a base on the low ground. Knowing that Monk has got a spawning unit on the high ground, that's a lot of ultras and scourges. We're going to be having some major attacks happening soon. Action is going to have to be careful. Those seven sunkens against a lot of bio. We might have a backstab. The single SCV is going to get sniped. Uh, okay, excuse me, that 8 o'clock position is not connected to the high ground base, guys. So there's going to be no way for um, for Monk to find that base with just a scouting SCV. He needs to make a conscientious choice to move there with his SCV. Anyways, we're going to be seeing a lot of bio trying to eye the top left of the screen of course it's gonna be from the low ground attacking against the high ground all right what's happening we'll be having some nice irradiate one single or just get irradiated you need to start to move somewhere else the rest of the marines start to come out here but they will become food for the ultras nice scourges to come out here only three sciences to west the rest of the sciences that's gonna be the question here action does some nice engagement he kills every single marine to the second group here but the first group is coming out very strongly so that's something to keep in mind here the number of ultras are still very high only three sciences so i think it's gonna be better now for mong to retreat to retreat and try to regroup with the rest of his bases but if he can find that additional hidden force base here that will be gold but he cannot find it he cannot suspect it this he cannot actually possibly fathom that there's a hidden base right there and not somewhere else on this map uh, anyways, now we have plus two weapons and plus two armor, so it's going to be very good for the medic marines, but the ultras are going to start to grow in size and number. A single marines start to move toward the 8 o'clock person. He suspects something might be there. It gets sniped right away. So could this be an indication, I think, to Mong that something is there? I don't know. One more marines get sniped, so all of those, you know, off bases were discovered that contain nothing. So what is going on inside Action's brain right now? He's possibly thinking, oh my god, why don't I see any force base somewhere? 
where that means you have a base somewhere else and this marine will fall as well now for sure he knows that something's at 80 club street because why are these ultras hanging out in that cor you know that corridor they're, he they're, they're waiting there for way too long anyways we have a nice scan but i think the scourges have trailing vision of the science so both the players are playing are contemplating what is going to be the next move here one single week of ultras is hanging out alone rejected by the group but now so many strong ultras start to come across the map we're going to be having some scourges attacking he needs to find those ultras great attack against the scourges but one science will fall no it doesn't die nice attack but all of these ultras will get irradiated but we're going to be having some splash damage as well ultras eating up the marines scourges coming from the back ultras coming from the right side is there going to be enough marines to, to support it looks like i don't think though there's still a lot of ultras remains they will all eat up the marines but two of the ultras are getting lost in the corner there looks like action is not paying attention but now he starts to get up and all of these ultras have lived they have all lived they have survived the war none of them died and those irradiated really did not do anything and i'm wondering why exactly this monk have only three senses and now he has more now he has more he's able to kill two ultras but that was that was way too late i think now it's going to be the moment for possibly for um, for action to hide some of his weak ultras and keep them home you know in in anticipation of drops or something like that but he goes to the attack anyways you know what now is kind of a, like a tipping point because those ultras are damaged before so they will start to fall like flies um but with Zerling support, looks like at the last minute Ashen is able to hold. He need to go home right now with his ultras unless he wants to get them all killed. He plow forward anyways. He thinks he's got enough to take it out. One more ultras will fall. Those, look at those ultras are all so weak, but they all survive. They all survive. But GG from Mong Action Text Game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, I'll be buying me coffee. The link to that is going to be in the video description. I will see you soon. Bye bye.